Hello and welcome to the final video in my 135th Border Models Panzer IV Vorpanzer F1 series. In the previous video we took a look at the tracks. In this video I'm going to take you through the entire weathering and final finishing stages. If you haven't seen the previous videos feel free to check them out, click the card above. In one of the previous videos we left off having sealed the tank in a coat of VMS matte varnish. On top of this layer, we're going to start with some chipping. For the chipping, I'm going to be using VMS Chip and Nick. The chipping is going to be applied in several layers. I'm starting with a light grey chip to simulate worn paint. I recommend a fine brush with a nice point. For this, usually a Kalinsky Sable works best. I'm using an Artis Opus 2.0 Kalinsky Sable for this job. The chip and nick was applied straight from the bottle. It wasn't thinned at all. I try to apply the chipping logically in areas where wear might accumulate the most. Areas like around the hatches, the edges of the vehicle and the fenders were focused on quite heavily. Variation is the key when chipping, so make sure to join lots of little chips together to make bigger ones and to add some scratches as well. The most useful feature of the VMS chip and nick when using it like I am now, is that it's removable, so if you get any blobby chips or mistakes, you can remove them easily. For the next layer of chipping, I used a rusty brown CN01 and a dark brown CN04 chip and nick. These were sometimes used independently and sometimes mixed together. These darker chips will be painted inside the lighter grey chips to simulate worn metal and corrosion. Using a multi-layered chipping effect is a great way to add some variation and realism to your model. One of the keys to this technique is not to fill in all of the previous chips you've made, just fill in a select few. In areas where there's lots of wear on the vehicle, you can go a bit more crazy, but for areas where there are mainly just scuffs, it's best to leave the lighter base colour. The chipping in this corner of the turret stowage box looked unnatural and I wasn't happy with it, so I decided to remove it. I loaded up a cotton bud with a VMS Chippernick chipping aid. And after making a bit of a mess, I started rubbing off the chips with the cotton bud. Overall the process was satisfyingly painless. It beats respraying and it's definitely safer than using an airbrush cleaner, which I have used very gently for similar situations in the past. For the next stage, I made an approximation of my Panzer Grau with Vallejo black, white and field blue. This was painted in a negative chipping or mapping style over some rust coloured Vallejo paints. I wanted to emulate some extreme heat wear so I decided to paint the Panzer Grau on instead of the rust. This way the grey paint is exactly where I want it and it's nice and controlled. Like when chipping the regular paint, smaller chips closer together is much better than larger chips. 
With all the elements of the paint chipping complete, I sealed it in with a coat of VMS satin varnish. I found this varnish sprays best unthinned, which is a surprise because it's quite thick, but the finish it gives is really nice. The next thing I'm going to do is reinforce some of the modulation. I'm going to make a highlight and a shadow colour of the Panzer Grau. For the highlight, I used French Ultramarine, Lamp Black, Burnt Umber and Titanium White. For the shaded areas, I used French Ultramarine, Burnt Umber and Lamp Black. This was combined with the VMS Oil Expert Enhancing Medium to help everything dry quicker so I could move on to the next stage more swiftly. The lighter mix was painted onto the areas of the model that I wanted to pop more, like raised edges, around the hatches, and some of the rivets. In some areas, I wanted the highlights to graduate a bit, so I used a soft sable brush to blend them in. The shadow colour that I previously mixed was used to create some false shadows to add some alternal variation. These were again blended in with a soft sable brush. I sealed this layer in after about half an hour with some VMS Satin Varnish HD. When the varnish was dry, it's time for a wash. I used a mix of French Ultramarine and Burnt Umber Artist Oils for this. And if you've seen the previous videos on my channel, you'll know that I really rate this colour combination. If you add more brown, it can look more dirty, and if you add more blue, it can look more oily. It's a really good, all-purpose wash. This was thinned with low odour thinners. It was then pin washed around all the details on the model. In some areas, where I went a little too heavy with the wash, I used a dry sable brush to wick the excess away. A wash is a great way to accentuate the details on your model. You can use different colours for different theatres and vary the intensity for different depths. <laughs> 
When the oils had dried, I sealed them in with a layer of VMS matte varnish. You can let the oils cure naturally and work over them safely, but that takes a few days, so I like to seal them in with an acrylic clear to speed the process up. I also find the next step, streaking grime and dust, to work better over a matte surface, as the oils don't slide around as much and it's much more controlled. Some of the deeper chips were dotted with Abtilung 502 oxide patina. These rusty spots were applied quite sparingly with a fine sable brush. They were then blended in with lower thinners. For areas like the top of the turret, I just wanted to show some minor surface rust. That's why I kept the effect subtle. Next up, I applied a few rust streaks to the side of the hull. These were painted on with 502 oxide patina. They were then streaked up and down until they were blended nicely. As you can see here, I had to do two applications until I was happy with the result. You can clean up any excess you don't want with a fine brush lightly dampened with low odor thinner. I wanted to add some dirty grimy streaks so I used AK Winter Streaking Grime. Small spots of the streaking grime were applied to various areas of the hull and then blended in with lower to thinners and a soft sable brush. I prefer the AK Winter Streaking Grime over the standard streaking grime as it just looks a bit more filthy. Next up was the mud. Now this is an area that always makes me nervous, so let's see how I get on. I started by building up a moderate base of Wilder light brown stony textured earth mixed with aquiline dry earth. This was mixed about 80-20 with a bias towards the dry earth. In future I won't be using the brown stony textured earth for this process again, as the stones are just too big. At the moment this looks bad and really messy, but it's just a base for pigments and other techniques in a bit. When the Wilder mud effects are dried, I used a soft brush dipped in water to blend them in 
AK brown earth dust and dirt deposits was then run over the whole running gear. This will give the dry areas of the mud a really dusty look. Before I move on to the heavier mud effects, I'm going to apply some of the dust mix to the upper hull. AK Dust and Dirt Deposits Brown Earth was built up like a heavy wash in areas where dirt would accumulate. As it's basically a pigment wash, you can reactivate it and blend it into your heart's content. The turret ring is a good place for dirt accumulation, so I made sure this was appropriately mucky. Like with my previous wash, any excess was wicked away with a dry sable brush. Any hard or unsightly edges were blended away with AK odorless thinners. In some areas, I used the brown earth dust and dirt deposits, heavily thinned with odorless thinners for some subtle dirt effects. Okay, let's get on to the heavier mud effects. For the first layer of mud, I used VMS spot on pigments mixed with acrylic structuring binder and some plaster. I used the coarser grade of the VMS pigments for a bit more texture. The plaster bulked out the pigments a bit more and the structuring binder added the strength and glued it all together. I had to make sure this was thoroughly mixed before I added it to the vehicle. This was then dabbed on with a tatty old brush. I wanted to simulate several grades of mud on the tank. The previous layer was a dry dusty layer. This layer of pigments will be dry bulky mud. Before this layer of mud mix had dried, I dabbed on some dry pigments. The next layer of mud was going to be a slightly damper one, 
I used a darker VMS pigment with a finer grade mixed just with the acrylic structuring binder. This was applied more carefully as I wanted some of the drier mud to remain visible. The next stage of the mud was some speckling with brown earth aka dust and dirt deposits. This will emulate mud splashes that have dried. Next up I added a mix of burnt umber and French ultramarine artist oils. This will simulate some of the wettest areas of the mud. The wetness was exaggerated with AK grease for shafts and bearings. This was also speckled on for more variation. For some final wet effects, I used Humbral Enamel Gloss Varnish mixed with some odorless thinners. This was painted on areas where water might collect and over the darker areas of the mud. I used AK grease for shafts and bearings to add some oil and fuel stains to the engine deck. This was brushed and speckled on until it was suitably grimy. Once the grime had dried, the build was complete. So, 
How do you think I did? Let me know in the comments below, and don't forget to subscribe and leave a like. I want to give a big thanks to you for watching, and I want to give a huge thanks to my patrons for supporting my work. If you're interested in supporting the LPJ Models channel, click the link in the description or the card above. And finally, I want to give a big thanks to Sarah from Staples and Vine for helping me rescue this project. Sarah does some scratch building and awesome 3D printed work, so head over to her channel and check it out. It's just youtube.com forward slash staples and vine. Don't forget to stick around for the awesome gallery shots at the end of the video. Anyway, that's it from me. I'm James from LPJ Models. Thanks for watching. Subscribe.